Percy Jackson meets Indiana Jones in the New York Times bestselling epic adventure, Seven Wonders. The fast-paced tween series about four friends on a quest to unlock the secrets of the ancient world has a new installment. It's a fourth book called Seven Wonder, The Curse of the King. And joining us today from New York City to give us the scoop on these wildly popular books is the series author, Peter Laryngeus. Thank you so much for joining us, Peter. It's wonderful talking to you. Uh, it's great to talk to you, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, it's great that you've got the fourth book going on. What is it you think attracts readers to your series? It's got to be the covers. No, no, actually, <laughs> the book. The, the, the it's it. Here's the here's the thing. Um, every kid wants to have a superpower, right? I know I did when I was a kid. Okay. And in this series, we have we have four kids. Uh, Jack, Allie, Cass, and Marco. Each of them have inherited something from the prince who escaped the sinking of the continent of Atlantis. Okay. And what this quality does is it takes whatever you're already good at and turns it into a superpower. But nobody who's ever had this condition has ever lived past the age of 14. Well, Jack mm. and his friends are 13 years old, right? Okay. So they show up, they, they find themselves on this island where there's an institute and scientists and they found a cure. If these kids can find seven objects seven relics that were hidden in the seven wonders of the ancient world centuries ago, bring them back to this island, they'll be cured, and they'll have lives with superpowers, and they'll also save the world. Okay, that's, wow. That's the basic premise. So the series kind of takes them from adventure to adventure where they meet all these crazy, uh, these crazy creatures, and they, they do a lot of travel, they've got to go to Greece, they've got to go to all the different locations, Six of the seven wonders don't exist anymore, so they've right. got to solve that problem. And by the end of book three, not only have they had one betrayal, one defection from, um, from among their ranks, but also one of the seven loculi has been destroyed. Once that happens, all bets are off. Oh my. So that's where we begin book four. I'll tell you what, young readers just absolutely eat this stuff up, but you didn't just rely on imagination. You've got an interactive part of this now. Explain that to me. A lot of people don't know what the seven wonders of the ancient world are. Right. And on, on our website, we actually set up an interactive map where you can learn about each of the seven wonders. And I actually do a little video, seven different videos for each one. So you get a little background. Okay. Uh, you can learn about the characters, learn about the books, etc. That's awesome. Peter, thank you so much. Congratulations on your fourth book. But you've actually written 165 others, haven't you? I have. That's true. When I first got started, right, um, I, you know, I, I wasn't a writer. I always wanted to be a writer. I thought I couldn't do it. Yeah. And in college, I, I was a biochemistry major. So when I started, I had to pretty much start out of the starting gate fast, and I had to learn. So I did a lot of work for hire. I uh, did a lot of uh, um, writing for series like The Hardy Boys, okay. and I didn't get credit for it, but you really had to produce. So right at the beginning of my career, I actually wrote quite a few books, which is why the number is so high now. Wow, that's incredible. And you, you were a Broadway theater actor. Yeah, before I became a writer, that's true. Yeah, I was in a Broadway show called They're Playing Our Song, which is now ancient history. But um, I did that on Broadway. I did it in the national tour. I did Summerstock. You name a musical, I probably did it. And that was sort of crammed into the eight years before I became a full-time writer. Wow. And here you are from New York's Broadway to New York's bestseller list, Peter Lorenzis. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much for your Thanks, time Jim. with us this afternoon. Yeah, I think you might need to get this book, Seven Wonders, The Curse of the King. If you'd like to know more about the Seven Wonders series, including a link to the book's interactive website, all you have to do is go to our website, WBOC.com, and click on a picture at the top of the page. Now, something that goes great with a good read is a delicious meal, so we're taking care of that, too. Up next on Delmarva Life, we're in the Delmarva Life kitchen making lump crabs sautéed with wild mushrooms and leeks. But first, let's make a stop in Rachel Ray's kitchen. She has a handy how-to tip for the next time you need to remove a core. You know, every once in a while, it's fun to go back in the day and make one of those iceberg uh, lettuce salads with blue cheese dressing over the top. It's also fun to remove a core from iceberg lettuce, right? Whack! Get all your aggression out, and it just pops right out the bottom. And when it comes to apples or fennel or cabbage, what I do is I quarter and cut into them on the angle, and boom, core's gone. 